top left hand corner of Ohana, we have our blue Protoss player from Team Liquid. It is the one and only Hero. And his opponent down to the bottom right hand corner from Team Ennis Hosa, it is Salvation. Ohana's the name of the game for PBT. Well, that can lend itself towards some uh, macro-oriented games. You know, it's not the best map for aggression. Uh, I do remember seeing a game fairly recently uh, with some pretty cool immortal. It was a two-base, big, a big two-base immortal sentry play. Uh, I, I know that MC was the Protoss, so Terran's eluding me right now. But other than that, I, I haven't seen too many two-base plays uh, prevail on this map from the Protoss perspective. Now, from Terran, of course, you have a lot of options when it comes to drop play to really set your Protoss opponent back, but there still are not a lot of kill moves. So I do expect you know, us to see a little bit of a macro game here, and that's exactly what I'd like to see, especially in a game uh, with Hero, who can be so exciting in that late game with his just incredible multitasking, loves that warp prism play, and can get very, very very innovative but uh how you know comparing that how salvation's like it well you know we mentioned the, or we haven't mentioned yet but i think it's important to note that nsosa terrans are very interesting they're very unique uh jockey was a player who mm -hmm. kind of liked his early game micro battles he would open up with pretty aggressive things he would try and do damage early on secure that advantage as he went throughout the game and kind of always attack 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 very tasia style actually if yeah. you make it if we had to compare him to somebody yeah but i mean you know tasia almost has even more of a like tasia will will be fine with taking like a billion command centers <laughs> and just waiting out and playing almost a zerg style terran which is just waves of units just kind of flowing out. Chachi was a little bit more calculated. I mean, I, it's a good comparison, but you'd like, to, but the Enesosa Terrans, they, they can be very surgical in their strikes. Like, they know this is the moment when to in. send in uh, a few different units. So, Salvation actually opening up with gas first. I'm actually not all that surprised to see it. Hero's gonna read, uh, pick up on this right away. Sees the gas is already pretty far down, and the barracks isn't even complete yet. So, wonder how he's gonna react to this. Well, you know, one of the fun things about opening with a gas first is it's really not so standard in the meta at this point. Um, mm -hmm. you, you just don't see it as often. So the Protoss response to it is really going to vary in what decisions you do opt to go for because yeah, it's it's not standard, simply put. Yeah. And this goes back to what you were saying about, you know, the NSO so players being a little bit different. So uh, it does lend itself towards a little bit more difficulty uh, in actually executing your play styles. But Hero, well, I'm going to be, uh, I'm pumped to see what he does here to re reply. We do see a Zealot in production. It is always possible, of course, he could could uh, pull an Alicia, who of course cancels his zealot every single game that he plays. <laughs> I feel like never seen him make the zealot. So, uh, yeah. but I, I think Hero's going to let that pop out, get himself some early game units, and in fact, he's going to chrono boost a stalker right behind it to get that uh, SCV out of his base. Yes, he is. Now there is certainly a potential for Salvation to jump in and do some damage early. He's got the reactor and Hellions already coming out. Could very easily put up a starport and do a big Hellion drop. Um, that has been a thing, although a little bit different way to go about it uh, at the beginning of some PVTs into expands. Although we're of course more used to seeing the very conventional. Uh, one racks gasless fast expand or something along those lines. He does actually have enough gas to go for that starport now. Uh, instead, just popping out his first couple of Hellions as he prepares to uh, do a little bit of damage later on. It is a little bit surprising. Pulling the 150 gas with uh, 150 minerals, I mean, you got to wonder uh, what exactly, if, if, if he's making a, a tech switch here, because mm -hmm. you'd expect the tech lab at this point at a minimum. Right. Uh, so definitely not, I, I mean, it, it is good. You're going to be able to adapt a little bit better. It looks like he is going to opt to go for that command center we see. The SCV is already uh, waiting to drop that down. So maybe just going to be a big heavy tech or upgrade play to follow this up. And we do see. Here goes the factory going to be landing. Expect a tech level out in well, the future. But right now, Hellion's killing off a probe at the Zelnaga Tower. Looks like he's moving his way across the map. Well, what he is doing right now as... <laughs> Thank you, Xenio. I just want to say that. No chat, please. Chat shows on the <laughs> replay. Anyway... Um, Thank you, Xenio. I appreciate it. Or whoever's on Xenio's account at the moment. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Hero <laughs> is preparing for some sort of a drop play and everything like that. And it does mean that his Nexus is a little bit delayed compared to his opponent. So it looks like the, the Fane of Tech, at the very least, is going to uh, force out a bit of a weird response. Now, Salvation hasn't followed this up with uh, that many more units. He finally has tanks on the way. So we may even see that, um, that uh, former Nada-style play, which is the big uh, mm. marine uh, tank Banshee push, even. Well, here are the Hellions. Meanwhile, that Warp Prism is making its way down the left-hand side. We haven't actually... Uh, it's not a Warp Prism. Okay, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. Actually, I was like, uh, you said drop place. I was confused. But uh, now the Hellions sitting at the bottom of the ramp, making their way up. We, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, the probe's out of the map. I'm expecting a pylon and maybe some aggression here because the Robo's only halfway done. Here we are, 630. Sentry going to be trying to take out these Hellions. Zealot doing a little bit of chase as well. Sentry getting pretty low on hit points. Does Ooh. get taken out. A nice small victory there for Salvation. You know, free 50 minerals, 100 gas.
Yeah, I mean, that's 150 resources and a denial on any units that would come out and try and defend against the Nexus. There was a group of four Stalkers that was back here because Hero read into this, what I thought was going to pop out at the beginning. He thought that uh, there could be that big uh, Hellion Marine drop that uh, tends to start a lot of PVTs nowadays. Mm. Um, but that's not going to be the case. And as such, Salvation's able to pick up that Sentry without losing a Hellion. One gets very low, but he can repair that back up. Yeah. No, definitely great things here to start for Salvation. Moving out now with some Marines and tanks. And, well, since he maintained the uh, survival of those Hellions, mm -hmm. is, he, he, is he actually sent an SCV out there with it? There's a unit lagging behind. That's the second Siege tank, in fact. Ooh. So this is a pretty powerful push coming out of Salvation right now. Hero does not know it's on the field. He's about to get a glimpse of it. There we go. Now it's in the view of that Zelnaga Tower. He does know these units are coming. Stalker going to be falling back. And what does Hero have in order to deal with this push? Well, uh, right back at home, four Stalkers. Is there anything inside of the main? No, not really. Yeah. The first Immortal is about to pop up, and it looks like Salvation is just going to threaten and then turn around back home. An interesting choice. You know, he does get Hero to make the units that he may not optimally want to make in, the, mm -hmm. in a late-game situation. It's kind of like pushing out against a Zerg. Uh, whereas a, a Terran isn't going to be so responsive uh, immediately, you know, it takes a lot of time to make those units. But when you see a Terran moving out as a Protoss, you're immediately, oh, I need to get myself some Stalkers, or I need to get myself some Sentries now. And those may not be the units you're going to want in the long term for your composition. So a nice there, uh, move there from Salvation, you know, having the expansion. But the Siege Tanks ultimately don't tend to work out too well in the late game uh, against Protoss. We have seen some interesting adaptations to that, but... yeah. You know, the, and the, your analogy, uh, as far as a Protoss player goes with Zerg, works on another level, too, because they do kind of play like Zerg in the sense that uh, they want to be able to invest in infrastructure, upgrades, etc., and play minimal defense for a while if they're playing that later game strategy, mm -hmm. and then they can kind of kick on the uh, the afterburners and just go into units, 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 units right afterwards off of 15 gateways or something yeah, like that. Yeah, also a definitely great point to make, yeah. Um, so, let's see here. Salvation is tooling around the map. He's just making sure that he doesn't pick up on anything weird, and I don't think he's seen any of these pylons, despite the fact that he's gotten relatively close to all of them. And uh, the Hellions will die, but not before they get in and get some pretty good scouting information. So I am surprised he didn't take it into the main I there. I too. <laughs> yeah, definitely had a, an opening. You know, the sentries not having enough energy to throw down that third force field could have slipped by and missed a lot of vital scouting information that he surely would have obtained. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you know what? The robotics bay being a really, really big factor uh, in involved in that, you know, knowing your opponent's going for Colossus, it's extremely important. Now, uh, Factory is going to get scouted actually moving out across the map. Scouting just not going well here for Salvation. No, unfortunately not, but he still has a very strong army. As we can see, he's backed by six workers, and that six supply is made up in attack units. I and mean, he's gone to a powerful push with siege tanks and siege mode, strong marauders and marines, moving into that more classical bio composition that we see out of Terran players. Uh, doesn't have a third command center that I know of, though. Looks like he's uh, just waiting on those for the time being while he moves out across the map. Yeah, uh, Hero moving down to defend there and then opting to pull back up, realizing, okay, I actually have enough force fields for uh, <laughs> energy for two force fields. So maybe I don't want to be out here in the open. But, uh, you know, uh, being back in his base is also going to give him the ability to defend against this drop much better. Hero spotting this, in fact, with that pylon, uh, as you can see there with the camera. So Stalker's in position. This drop, just going to take out 100 minerals, and that's about it. Actually, it's going to supply block Hero for the moment. Uh, yes, but is. he's very nice and low on minerals and gas, so it's not going to be too much of a punishment. And there we go. Pylon already finishing. And this pylon actually has a perfect read on wow, yeah. the base is coming up. So we'll see if Hero decides to turn this into a uh, big two-base push or if he is going to do something a little bit different. Sea Shanks get a range and actually do get a couple of volleys on these uh, Zealots. But, of course, they're very resilient against those ground units. Can't keep them clumped, though, hmm. as uh, that would result in some very dead units very quickly for our Protoss player. Uh, Medivac gets taken out. Nice focus fire from Hero with a Stalker's last few Marines will be killed off as well. The Siege Tanks! Oh, caught Ooh. in a simple move command, and that is not good for a Salvation. You know, he got two Zealots with those tanks, but Hero being very active with his units, making sure he caught those tanks the second they were on Siege, and in fact, Salvation let them just simply walk a bad pathing. And it looks like the Zealot's going to get picked off here before it's able to do any significant damage, and this uh, command center is not going to be impeded. And this may be uh, Hero's time to move. Catching those siege tanks out does weaken the defense quite considerably for mm -hmm. Salvation. Salvation, after making some very good decisions at the beginning, tricking his opponent a little bit, delaying his expansion, hasn't followed up on the execution all that well. Um, we'll see now if he can catch Hero a bit out in the open. He's stimming up and trying to get some damage done, but the Stalkers are rejoining the army. 
Now there is a third Colossus nearing completion here, but the engagement might happen beforehand. Force Field's going to go down, not going to manage to trap Salvation's units, and it looks like both players content to fall back just for a minute or two. Third base going to go down for Hero right under the view of this factory. Look at him clicking on it. He wants that factory dead. You can see the Stalkers moving on the minimap. Meanwhile, Salvation is going to be transferring a lot of SCVs over to his third base, killing off these destructible debris so he can easily facilitate movement back and forth between that natural and third, giving himself a good defensive position. Now it looks like this factory is going to burn to the ground, unfortunately. Not a lot of airspace up here, so it can't duck back to the left and try and get some scouting before it burns down because it'll just cross the path of the Stalkers once again. So a mm -hmm. uh, little unfortunate, but uh, Hero still in a pretty good spot. He's making that necessary transition up to Templar now because you have to be able to, uh, you know, I mean, uh, Protest players love baiting tons of Vikings out of their opponents, switching up and throwing charge lots and colossi, or uh, charge lots and archons. I'm sorry, at uh, at their opponent afterwards if they decide to overcommit. Plus one attacks is coming up though, which is a necessary step as yep. we move towards the uh, later part of this game. Pretty sure plus one armor was researched earlier as well, so it's one one versus one one. Looks like we have an engagement gearing up possibly in the middle of the map, but no. Both of these players continually just ducking in and ducking out. It's almost like we're playing whack-a-mole and nobody can hit anything. Salvation, he wants to press it down, though. Uh, really get up in Hero's territory, try to force something here. Both players pretty equal in supply, though, so this engagement could certainly go either way. And he pulled 10 SEVs to go along with this uh, to repair up, it seems. Very nice volley on the uh, Colossi. The first Colossus does go down. The second one actually taking some pretty considerable damage. Charge Lot's now finally starting to close on the rest of the Marauders and Marines off to the side, but uh, these SEVs provided a bit of a buffer, but haven't really been there to repair up any units. All the Colossi did fall, though, was actually the perfect number of Vikings to bring to the mm -hmm. front. Surprised he's not shooting down the sentry, providing its Guardian Shield has actually created so much sustain for the rest of these units that are sitting back there taking less and less damage. Salvation does some damage, notably in taking out all of the Colossi, and that's the big benefit for him, but he didn't do any of the economic damage that he wanted to do. Yeah, you know, ta uh, talking about that sentry was a great point there, because that was an engagement that Salvation almost had won. It was, it was very close on the tipping point, uh, because those Colossi died without really dealing any splash damage. They were hitting single, isolated units, but here we go. Charge Lot's engaging once again, but this is a point where Salvation is not going to be able to close this up. Uh, he's he's going to have to be happy with the fact that he killed all the Colossi, and now he really just needs to go home. And Storm is finished, so these Templar are quite a threat, not just for taking out any energy on the available medevacs, but also for just outright killing a lot of bio units there. So um, Tasia, despite the earlier warning from Xenio, <laughs> is still continuing to chat, so uh, shame on you, Tasia. Uh, <laughs> let's see here, though. Fourth Command Center is about ready to finish up. Uh, despite that fact... Hero still has a pretty staggering force back at home. Upgrades 1-1 one, one now for uh, Hero. Looks like 2-2 two, two just finishing up for Salvation. Uh, a lot of uh, this, this game has really been characterized by both players kind of dancing out towards the middle and then backing away. It's almost uh, like you're putting two magnets together and they just don't want to interact. Uh, you know, we had that little engagement earlier. Both players kind of trading their valuable units. We saw some bio killed off. Ooh, once again, a zealot coming down. Will it manage to get the SCV? No. It's just going to dive into the middle line, cause a little bit of havoc. We'll see if Hero uses this as an opportunity to move his units forward. I'm looking at his army, but it, oh, there we go. He does start moving forward. You know, a lot of times you can use a few units, and players just tend to grab the control group with their entire army and move it back to respond yeah. to a very small group. And you can use that to gain map control. So that's exactly what Hero's doing right now. He's like, all right, I go out, I take the Zelnaga Tower. I keep you in the dark, and uh, a good position for Hero. Now we're going to see him throw down some tech structures. This is feeling very, very comfortable that nothing is headed his way right now. Good number of gateways up for three bases. Is he thinking about taking a fourth? Yes, he is. Has some minerals for it, too, so we could drop it down really any moment. Upgrades coming along nicely for Hero now. He does finish up 2-2, moving into 3-3, actually, before his opponent even starts his. We do have the plus two attacks and an additional starboard coming up for any units in the air. Uh, but Hero is actually going to pressure this base. He forces a lift, at the very least kills some workers. We'll see if he's content with that and runs away, because otherwise he's going to run smack dab into Salvation's army. Well, you know, this is a good position, <laughs> though, for Hero. Army. Salvation does not want to cram his way up. Meanwhile, guys, a zealot drop going on in the mace, ba main base of Salvation. Storm oh going to go down. Nice amount of damage there on those Marines. Zealot's going to keep trying to make their way through, but this is a pretty good choke for Salvation, so he's cleaning them up fairly cost-efficiently. Meanwhile, a little bit of dancing going on with the army, a couple of storms going down, but just a little bit of damage on Salvation's army. Not any major losses quite yet for Hero, but he is getting pretty uh, pretty confident pushing down while these Zealots are continuing to pull Marines back towards the main base. 
I'm laughing every time we say Salvation's Army. I, I just, it's a thing, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Uh, anyway, well, Hero's continuing with his harassment. He still has more units that are running around inside of the main. And this has proven to be pretty effective. He's killed an additional 15 workers. Um, don't forget, he killed about 10 of them across the map, the ones that Salvation had pulled to try and heal up his army. This poor Templar is going to get picked off without having another storm available. But uh, that's still fine because the amount of damage that he wanted was done. However, Salvation trying to retake this uh, base down towards the bottom left-hand corner, retake his fourth. Hero already posted it up very well though at his own fourth with photon cannons and templar waiting mm, this is just such a good position for hero now he doesn't really have his splash units in position here so yeah the force field's going down uh in time to buy him a little bit of time once no very nice storm on the right hand side doing tons of damage to that marine marauder ball uh but it looks like hero you know he's pretty much out of storms i think that is his last one so opting now to fall back after wow killing the expansion on top of all of that kevin destroyed it too wasn't uh lifted and floated away no it was outright killed and at the same time these drops are continuing to do damage looks like this missile turret did successfully take out the warp prism but this is still going to require response and we see a few Stimmerines running all the way back, and that's going to buy the time that Hero needs to continue building up his army. So even though Salvation has done some pretty good damage at times, Hero's done a magnificent job at delaying when necessary. Yeah, that's the late game uh, hero that we were talking about earlier. You know, he just has such incredible multitasking once he gets his hands on some warp prisms and really can use it to just pick apart the the comfort level of his opponent. Although the damage has been somewhat reciprocated on Hero, mm -hmm. uh, it, his Salvation feels kind of like he's torn all over the place. So now we see him pushing into a position that's going to be a little bit difficult for him. Does manage to get down to the right, so he's not stuck in that choke. That was very important for Salvation. Now the engagement coming down. EMP's getting dropped and hitting some of the sentries. The Colossi doing massive amounts of damage right now to those Marines. They are absolutely melting the Marauders. Stutter stepping forward, trying to pick off the Colossus. Beautiful kiting, though, out of Hero, not allowing them to fall until now. Now a last few ditch of Marauders do make it to the front lines, picking off the Colossi, but overall, look at the supplies, 120 to 100. Absolutely, positively a good engagement there for Hero. And that was about Salvation's best opportunity, too. If he had been caught on the ramp, he would have been destroyed because the Templar at the top would have just locked everything in position, and we would have been looking at about a 50 supply disparity between our two players. Mm -hmm. But he made his way off to the right, actually had a decent opportunity to engage us. But even with it, Hero with good positioning, pulling his Colossi back at the right times, making sure the Vikings didn't get too close to him, did some pretty significant damage. Also important to note that the medevac count was pretty low during that entire time, so those bio units did not get the healing that they needed moving forward. Uh, with that being said, Hero finishes up 3-3, moving over to plus one. Uh, plus one uh, shields at the moment. Also has blink, also has a lot of things in place to continue harassment as we see another warp prism coming up. Looks like Hero's getting ready to go for the throat at this moment. Zealot's going to be coming forward. Archon's pulling back once again. Hero deciding, all right, look, I have a 30 supply advantage right now. Should I capitalize on this? Should I not? He's also up a base, essentially. It looks like he is going to dive in for it. Lots of splash damage here between the Archons and the Colossi, but a ton of Medivac Storm going to do a huge amount of damage to all of that sustain for Salvation's army. Now down to almost no units whatsoever, Kevin. That's right. No charities from Hero here for Salvation's Army. And he falls. Game number one in the bag for Liquid Hero. Team Liquid off the right start. That was just a beautifully ga uh, played game altogether mm -hmm. by Hero. It yeah. really was. I mean, uh, in the early game, Salvation kind of playing some games with him. We were talking about, you know, how that was definitely a possibility with that Marine tank push. But held it off uh, pretty pretty de definitively you know he even moved on to the low ground at one point which i was a little surprised by i was like you have energy for two force fields right now but, <laughs> uh you know fell back exactly when he needed to stop the drop play completely and uh just secured his way to the late game where hero really does shine i mean he's he's got beautiful early and mid game mid game too but uh wow that late game from hero is just so impressive and how it really seeps into the confidence of your opponent making him just jitter be uncomfortable <laughs> It's That's like, right. Why do I have to keep running units back into my base? <laughs> and, and really, it's a it's a confidence booster for Hero yeah. uh, in that same way because you know, you're just you know you're doing that to your opponent. Yeah, pretty much everything was on point there after the first ten minutes of the game. I mean, Hero bit pretty hard on what uh, Salvation was doing at the beginning. He, he he bit into it. He he delayed his tech. He delayed uh, his expansion. Everything like that. So Salvation had gotten himself a little lead, but uh, you know didn't make a lot of good follow up decisions. And unfortunately, falls in game number one. Hero taking advantage of that nicely. Game number two is actually going to see another Terran player from NSO. So it's actually a former CODES champion. It's going to be NSOSA Jockji. So, and a very, this is going to be a great match. So, I uh, hope you guys are pumped.
Yeah. I'm going to take you into it in just a second. Yep, we're going to run to a commercial break. While you're away, though, if you want to, no, did she take it away? No, she didn't. It's just sitting over here, and I have to be off camera for a second. We're still giving away this awesome Astro A50 headset from our friends at Astro Gaming on Twitter. So follow them, and if you want to try and win this, head over to uh, IGN.com slash IPL giveaways. Again, that's IGN.com slash IPL giveaways. And uh, we're doing 12 giveaways to 2013, so this is just the first of 12 awesome giveaways that we're going to be doing. And there you go. It's up at the top ij.com slash ipl giveaways we're gonna run to a commercial break when we come back it'll be time for game number two